Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In this video, we're going to finish up our binary number pixel app and we have to focus on this converting decimal to binary. In the previous videos, we did this little pixel where you can kind of draw out like bits, turning them on or off. We also converted binary to decimal and let's just see that working over here. So you can see I can make different stuff. So that looks like a guy or a Pac-Man or something like that. And you can see down here, I have these values and let's just change a couple of these, zero. Here's your results, 155. So if I clear out all these, just to show you, and I put a one here and a one here, even if I put a two, it's gonna change it to one because you can only put a one or a zero. And I press the decimal. Here's your result, Adam. So you can see two to zero, two to the one is two, plus two to to the one, two raised to the one is two, plus two raised to the, the three, so two times two times two, which is eight, so eight plus two is equal to 10. Or if I put one here, and let's say I added a one here. Here's your result, 90. And you can see that works. If I added a one here. Here's your result, 218. So that is working. So now let's work on this converting decimal numbers to binary. In our unplug activity, I also showed you how to do this. Again, you're learning how to do this because it will be on the AP exam. We want to make sure that you really understand how to do this. So we did an unplug activity to show you, and now we're making an app to reinforce how to convert binary numbers to decimal and decimal numbers to binary. So let's get started. What we're gonna do is a user will type a number in here and when they click to binary, we're going to give them the binary number on that side of it. This came from my previous, so I'm gonna go ahead and collapse that. This also came from the previous, I'm also going to collapse that. And this, also came from our previous, so I'm just gonna collapse these blocks that we will not be using. And I can ex expand them later on, but since I won't be using them in this video, I'm just gonna collapse them and kind of move them out of the way. So, Let's focus down here. The user's gonna type in a number, press on this, and we wanna come up with the binary value. And you can see we, in the last video, we kinda of made this list with all of the values that we need. So two to the zero, two to the one, and just to kinda, of, let's add our in our comments for this. So this is one. Two raised to the one is two. 2 raised to the 2 is 4. 2 raised to the 3 is 8. 2 raised to the 4 is 16. You can see what's happening here. These numbers are doubling. 2 raised to the 5 is 32. Come here. 2 raised and add this. 2 raised to the 7 is 128. So we're going to use these values actually to convert our decimal. So, and we're going to use that. Let's go ahead. I'm going to collapse my horizontal. I don't need that in this one. Focusing here, uh, collapse that one. And let's focus text box decimal to binary. And the button decimal to binary. So I'm going to click on the button. When someone clicks that, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to make a procedure. Again, on your AP exam, the create performance task, you will need to make procedures. Procedures and methods or functions 
all the different programming languages exist and they help you become more efficient and write better code. So let's go ahead and make a procedure. And let's call this my decimal to my decimal to binary conversion. And all I'm going to do over here is call my decimal to binary conversion. So let's go ahead and bring out our comments. So this is going to convert the user decimal value to binary. Well, what do we have to do? One, get the users typed in value from text box and compare with values in our binary decimal values. What does that mean? So on, if user, that means go from bit seven through bit zero, if the value is greater, then the bit decimal value put a one into the result for that bit location. What does that actually mean? So if I type in here, if I type in 135. So if I type 135 in here, I know two to the seventh is 128. If 135 is greater than 128, I know I'm going to have a one in the seventh bit. Remember, looking at this, this is the seventh bit. So I would have a one here. So I would have 135 minus 128, which would give me seven. And then I would come down to this bit location. Is seven greater than that? No. Greater than that? No. Greater than that? No. Greater than that? No. Greater than that? Yes, seven is greater than four. So I know I would have a one here. Seven minus four would be three. Is three greater than that? Yes. So I would have a one in that bit location. Three minus two is one. Is one greater than or equal to one? Yes, I would have a one in that location. That's what we're doing. We did that in unplugged, quickly ran through it, but how is it gonna look inside of here? So number one, I'm gonna need the user's number. Let's make some more Local variables, again, this is a global variable. In the previous video, I showed you about local variables. So I'm going to click on variables. Let's pull in a local variable. I'm going to call it user number, just so we get for readability. The user number is whatever they typed into this text box. So I'm just going to come down here and textbook decimal to binary, and I'm just going to get the text and put that in there. Now, I also need a result to store my ones and zeros. So I'm gonna click on this little settings icon. Remember, you can do that with any block that has this little blue settings icon. I'm gonna add one more. And this is gonna be my result. My result is just gonna be text for right now, so it's empty. So what I can do, since I have this list, I can say start at the first item in the list, which is two to the seven, which is 128. Compare that value and then go to two to the six, then two to the five, two to the four. So I can just loop through this list actually. So loops we have not covered yet. We will cover that in Big Idea 3 um, after Big Idea 2, which we're currently on, which is data. But just follow me for now. A loop, we will definitely go over the loops a lot more in detail in the future. But for now, I'm just going to show you this. So we'll, so we're going to go to Control. And I have that list, and I want to go through each item in the list. And you can see there's a bunch of different types of loops. I'm going to look for this one for each item in the list. So I'm going to pull that here. And instead of saying item, let's say bit value. Because that's really what this list is, bit decimal value. And actually, I'll say bit decimal value to be even better. And the list, what is the list? It is that bit decimal values. 
So first bit decimal value will be this 2 to the 7, which is 128. Then it will be 2 to the 6, then 2 to the 5, and you get the point. So inside of here, if the bit decimal value, if the user's the user number is greater than the bit decimal value, I want to subtract that number and then continue. So I need an if statement. If, and I'm doing comparison, so that's math. And I'm saying if the user's number is greater than or equal to the bit decimal value. This is just each one of these, 2 to the 7, 2 to the 6, 2 to the 5, 2 to the 4. It loops through this list. If it's greater, what do I want to do? First, I want to put a 1 in that, in that location. So my result, I'm going to mouse over this, should be equal to whatever my result is. I don't want to lose it, so it's going to be a join statement. So I'm going to get whatever my previous result is. And since it is greater than this, I want to put a 1. Again, what this is doing, just so you can visualize this, I'm going to clear these out. So if I have 218, 218 is greater than 128. So I want to put a 1 here in the seventh location. So I'm going to put any time if a value is greater than or equal to this, I want to make sure I put a 1 in that location. The next thing I want to do is subtract whatever that bit value is from the result. So 218 minus 128, I would subtract that to get whatever is left. So I'm going to say user number, because that's what it currently is. I'm going to math because subtraction comes from that subject is equal to the user number minus that bit value. So what is this block doing? My user number, for example, was 218. It 218 is greater than 128. So I'm saying now it's 218 minus 128. And then I'll go to the next block and the next block and the next block. That's what the loop is. So one thing, so if it's greater than or equal to this, I'm putting a one in there, but let's say it's not. Let's say I had 62. Is 62 greater than 128? No. So I don't want to put a one there. I want to put a zero there. So I'm going to click on my else and I'm just going to update my result and it's going to be a join statement and it's going to be whatever my result currently is and I'm going to add instead of a one to that I'm going to add a zero believe it or not we are almost there so this is all the code you need actually to convert from if you have eight bits so two to the seven all the way down the only thing is we're not displaying it and I want to display it here. So I'm going to scroll down. This is my label binary result. I'll get my text. I don't want to put it inside the for statement. I just want to put it after that. And what do I want to display? I want to display my result. So I'm going to mouse over this and put this here. And let's speak as well. And I'll join. And let's say here is your result. And I will say the result. So let's just see if this works. I have 135 in there. Let's just use that, right? Here's your result. Win zero, 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 win, win one. Okay. Let's do a number. So let's see this number up here. Let's convert up here. So they have one zero 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 one one one. Let's check. One zero 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 one one one. I'm just gonna make sure that's correct. Yeah, so three ones. So 
computer is your result 135. So you can see if I type in 135 again, you can see that. Here is your result 1000000111. Let's do 255. And 255 is simply all of these on. Here is your result 255. So if I come here and I type 255. Here is your result win, 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 win. So you can see this is working and this is the code. Now here's the issue. We have seven bits. Seven bits can calculate up to 255. That's with all of these on. If I do anything higher than the max, which is 255, here's your result win, 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 win. That actually is not correct because I need to add more bits to this. So we could add a bunch more of the list, but in this instance, we're actually going to use the computer to do that. So if it's less than a byte, which is 8 bits, we're going to use my decimal binary conversion, which we just did, and it does work. If, if it's greater than this value, we're just going to use the one block of code that I showed you in the previous that can do this automatically. So let's come over here, and I'm going to make another procedure. And we're going to call this procedure CPU decimal to binary conversion. So inside of here, let's add in our comment for user numbers greater than one byte, which is seven, which is 255. Use the app inventor block to find the binary value. So to do that, I just need my label result and I'll duplicate this block here. And I don't have a result. So what I want to do is go to math, I'm going to go down to the bottom, convert number. I don't want to do base 10 to hex, I want to click on this and do base 10 to binary. And the binary number I want to grab is this, the text box decimal to binary. This is where the user is actually typing in their value. So let's pull this up here and pull this down. And I'll just put this over here like that. So this is this is converting using base 10 to binary. And I could have did the exact same thing before. So this answers everything. But again, I wanted you to really understand how to go from decimal to binary. So we did it the long way. All of this inside of here is what happens inside this one little code block. So now let's fix this. If it's greater than 255, we want to make sure that we call this one. If it's less than 255, we will call the one we made. So over here, I simply need to update my block. Let's add a comment into this. Number one, check if the user typed in a number. Number two, if the number is less than or equal to 255, use find binary using my decimal to binary or three else number is greater than 255 find binary using app cpu decimal to binary so how do we do that if statements very simple very top input first thing we want to check if it's a number so go to math and math as this block is something a number we want to check is what the user typed in a number so we're going to get this text here is what they typed in as a number if it is we want to do something if it's not we want to tell them hey type in a number so if it is we have two ifs here if it's less than this or that so i'm going to need another if and actually this is called an embedded if. We will learn more about this in unit three, which is algorithms and procedures. We'll talk about nested if statements. For now, you're just following me. Let's 
we're in the unit two, big idea data. So this is an if and if, which is an if inside of an if. So I want to check for this if the user number is less than if the user number is less than 255. And just like we did here, just to make it more readable, instead of having text boxes everywhere, let's make a local variable. Click on this, I'll pull in this. I'll say the user number is equal to whatever they type in. So now I want to say, is this user number less than or equal to 255? So I'm going to go to math. I want to compare. I'm going to pull this in. I'm going to say less than or equal to. And I want to get the user number. And if it's less than or equal to 255, I want to call this one because that's the maximum that we have in our list. So I'm just going to go to procedures, my decimal to binary conversion. If it's not, I want to call this one. That takes care of that 300 case. I'll say else, and I will call the CPU version of decimal to binary conversion. So again, the maximum with seven bits, which is what we have two to the seven, is 255. This is 300. We're saying if that user number is, is less than 255, yeah, you can use our stuff because we can calculate up to that value. If not, let's just use the simple block here. So now this should work. If I click on. Here's your result. Win, 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 win. So that seems not to be working. Let's refresh the screen just to verify that. So I'm going to go to refresh companion screen. And let's type in 300. Here's your results. Win, 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 win. So here's what you did not see. Here I have, if this is a number, do this. And I'm doing it here. But at the bottom, I'm calling this again, which I should not be doing. Because remember, my decimal to binary only converts numbers less than 255. So this right here is causing me an error. So let me delete that. So again, always check your code. So you can see, I only want to call it inside of here. So now if I try this, that is actually the result because 300 is greater than 255. And again, remember, let me just add these ones in here. This is seven bits. Here's your result, 255. So in our binary decimal value is two to the seven. The highest value is 255. If there's 300, which is more than that, we need more bits. Versus adding that in our list, we're just going to use this one block here. So I can do whatever number I want now. I can say 5, 4, 6, 8, 9, blah, blah, blah. And when I press the binary, it gives me that binary number. Now any number underneath, any number underneath uh, 255, so 254, for example. Here's your results, win, 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 zero. Or if I wanted to know what 10 would be, right? Here's your results, zero, 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 win, zero, win, zero. So that is, we have that working now. So with that, we have finished our app. This is our home. Interact with binary numbers. Time to draw with pixels and binary. We have our little pixel thing up here so we can kind of make different stuff. Maybe I'm making... So I can kind of make stuff. And here I can make convert binary numbers to decimal. Here's your result, 154. Down here, I can actually convert to... 
curious yourself when zero, zero, when, when zero, when zero. So you can see that's the same value. 154 is 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Down here, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. But I also, down here, can do bigger numbers. So if I did 6, 8, 7, and it adds bits to it. So there you go. Um, up here, the one thing I do like it talking. So I want to also bring that across. So text to speech, let's pull that in here. And I'm just going to move this over here. And this is a join statement. And let's say the same thing. Here is your result. And I don't have a result, but actually I do, because look, this value is getting saved inside of LBL decimal to binary result. So I'm just gonna go to that and get the text. So it's converting it and putting it there. Now I'm gonna get whatever it says. And let me make sure I have a space after result so it doesn't read it together. So now for 687, and there you go. This is our binary pixel app. Once you complete this assignment, don't forget to save it and then turn it into your teacher.